First of all, we're going to demonstrate a below elbow back slab. The below elbow back slab is generally applied for fractures of distal radius and scaphoid. We want the plaster to go from just below the elbow to the metatarsal heads. We are applying the plaster to a fracture which is generally dorsally angulated and dorsally displaced and radially angulated. So what we're going to do when we put our plaster on, we want the hand to be in a position of reduction, which is in volar angulation and slight ulnar deviation. Now, we don't want the back slab to be just on one side because that won't give us control. What we want to do is control the radius. So we want to try to get on three sides. We want to be on the volar side, the radial side and the dorsal side and leaving space on the ulnar side for swelling in case there is compartment syndrome. So first of all we're going to check our materials. We've got some stockingette which is a comfort layer and not everybody will have this available uh, but we're going to use it today. The second layer we're going to put on is plaster wool and this is really to protect the skin from the plaster and then we're going to use some uh, plaster. This is on a roll but some, in some places it comes as uh, five layers uh, in a roll which uh, comes in a box uh, but we're going to use this today. Um, we've got some felt which can be used to protect the uh, bony prominences like the ulnar styloid and if you don't have felt then you can just apply some gauze instead. And we've got a, stocking, a, a um, crepe bandage or a cling bandage uh, in order to bind around the plaster which will hold it together and stop it from falling off. And really important is that you have a pair of good scissors which can cut through the plaster. If Jess has kindly volunteered to allow me to apply a plaster back slab to her arm. So uh, as my patient Jess, uh, have you had pain relief? Yeah. Right. And I'm also going to check if you've got any pins and needles in your hand. Yeah. Right, and can you feel me touching each of your fingers? Yeah. Okay, and I'm going to do capillary recall five seconds just to make sure that there isn't any uh, neurovascular deficit. Right. So, first of all, we're going to apply our stocking up. So, just going to uh, um, show me your arm and I'm going to measure. I want this to go basically go from the uh, uh, crease in the antecubital fossa up to the metacarpal heads. And because when we apply this, uh, it when it goes sideways, it becomes shorter. So we need to uh, apply something that is longer than we think we need. So if I was to try to estimate that distance, which is a finger breadth and a half, a hand breadth and a half, and measure it in here. Although that looks like it should be long enough, when we apply it to the arm, what we find is that it's too short. So we need to cut something that's way longer than we think we need. So. It's a bit too long, it doesn't matter. And because Jess has got an injured arm, I don't really want to cause any more pain. So I'm going to roll this up like a sock. I'm going to check that she has capillary refill and that she doesn't have any paresthesia and she's had analgesia before we start. I'm going to make a little slit for the um, thumb and we'll pass that down. and unroll it on the arm so it doesn't cause any pain on this very injured arm. And this goes all the way down to the antecubital fossa, which is exactly the length that we need. Next, we're going to apply some wool. This wool, I'm going to make a hole in it so that I can secure it to the thumb. I'm going to wrap it around and let's make another hole in it because I want at least two layers 
at this uh, 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 every level. And then I'm going to go around the thumb and I'm going to overlap it 50% every time that I make a revolution. And at the proximal end, I need to make sure that I've got two full layers and then I can cut it off and smear it down. I want my plaster to be covering the uh, bowler side, the radial side and the dorsal side of the wrist. I'm going to leave it on the side free so that there's room for expansion in case there's compartment syndrome. I don't want to cause that because there might be swelling within a full plaster. So I'm going to measure from three finger breaths above the uh, undercubital fossa up to the metacarpal head, so which is about here. And I'm going to fold this over and I want six layers. And I'm going to roll it over like this so that when I dip it in the water it doesn't all fall apart. That's four layers. Five layers and six layers. Now, because I want this to be a radial slab, I'm going to fold it in half because that's where I want it to go over the arm. I'm going to have a look and where I want to make my hole for the thumb and it's going to be right in the middle. So I'm going to cut the hole through here, in the middle, I'm going to make a nice oval for the thumb to sit in. I'm going to keep hold of this because this might be useful later. So if we have a look at that, that's going to sit on the radial side, it's going to cover the radial the bowler and the dorsal aspects of the radius, which is the bone that we're trying to control. It's a little bit long on this side, but I can always fold it back here, and it's just perfect on the proximal side. So now I'm going to dip this in water, and I'm going to hold it so that it doesn't come apart, dip it in the water until it's completely soaking, and then I'm going to squeeze out the excess water, which will also bring these six uh, separate layers into one solid lamina. The water, is, you don't want it to be too hot, you want ideally about room temperature so that uh, it, uh, the plaster doesn't set too quickly and also because when you dip this in water and there's an exothermic reaction you don't want to heat up uh, the skin too much and cause a burn. So I'm going to dip this in the water until the bubbles stop, take it out and then squeeze out the excess fluid and we can apply that to the bowler side of the arm making sure that we're leaving the thumb free and then smooth it out with the palms and then try to avoid using my fingers because if I dig my fingers in then what can happen is that it can leave a indentation which will cause a pressure sore on the skin. We can then fold this back on the, prox on the proximal side and just make us a slit in this around the thumb and fold this back. So I'm reading the metacarpal heads again. And then I can dip my thin bandage in the water, bring it out, and then I'm going to wrap this around the arm. I'm going to put on reasonably tightly because it's holding the plaster in and keeping its shape. And when I go around the thumb, I'm going to twist it so that it doesn't impinge on the thumb.
what I can do is then at the end use this little bit of plaster that I cut from the hole and that can be used to secure the end of the cutting bandage and hold it in place. You could leave the plaster like that or you could use a technique called three point fixation. This involves putting pressure on the plaster in three different places and actually helps you to reduce the fracture and get it into a better, more controlled position. Now, what I want to do is to be able to mould this so that it provides three-point fixation and I want a little bit of bowler angulation and a bit of ulnar angulation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rest the, wrist, rest the wrist on my knee and the fracture would be underneath my, uh, on top of my knee. I'm going to apply a little bit of pressure here and a little bit of pressure here and this will give us nice bowler angulation. It, because it warms up it shouldn't be too painful for the patient and we're just going to apply a gentle pressure to squeeze the air out so that we get good control of the fracture. We just hold on to that until the plaster has set. The plaster itself can take several hours to set. It's not a good idea to try to accelerate the drying by using a hairdryer or anything else. Just let it set naturally, but obviously you've got to avoid it getting wet. Okay, so now we have, you can see where the pressure has been applied, and we've now got a slightly curved plaster. And after you've performed any procedure, you want to check that the sensation is still intact, there are no pins and needles. Check the capillary refill. We can use a bit of the plaster wool to clean any excess plaster from the patient's skin. After you've made any kind of intervention, you should really get a check x-ray to make sure that the position is acceptable uh, post uh, application of Vaxoft.